Okay, today we're talking generator four. I got that many digits so I can do that. Um, everybody's been asking me about generators, so I'm gonna try to give you as much information I can as nobody will tell you this stuff, so let's carry on. Okay, now a generator you can use anywhere from whatever you want. I don't care what generator you use, whatever you buy, you just live with it. You just use it to what its capability is, okay? So, AC is 2,000 watts, okay? Um, a micro is 1,200. Coffee maker is 1,400. Okay, and then you got your hot water heater. That is uh, just around the 1600 mark. And the one that really kills you is the converter. The converter is over a thousand watts. And then uh, there's one more. I'm trying to think. Okay, now what this is, don't worry about the glass. This is uh, racing white out. It'll come off. Don't worry. I won't throw a hammer at me. So this is what you want to do. Now, if you want to run your AC, get a, a 3,000, 3,500 watt generator. If you want to run your micro, you can run it with a 2,000, but you can't have nothing else on. This is just logic is all it is. There's no rocket science here at all. Coffee maker, 1,400. Now, what you do for a coffee maker is you buy one with a thermal pot. Nobody's going to tell you this, so pay attention. You buy it with a thermal pot. You plug it in, you turn it on, and it makes a coffee, and then it turns it off. So all it does is make takes the power for that, whatever it takes, five, 10 minutes to make the coffee. That's what we use, the 1400 watt. The hot water heater has got the 120 plug on it. So um, if you plug that in, I call it a dead short because I don't really think it's a gain for what it does. I got mine unhooked, but 1600 watts is what it'll do. Converter, if your battery is dead, when you plug it in, it's gonna go dead right now. It's gonna go to a dead short because it's gonna max out everything. And even with the inverter I have, it'll max out at 5,000 for three and a half seconds and it'll pop it. So I don't even run the inverter on or the converter on the inverter. I'm gonna get you all confused here in a minute. But that's just the, the thing of it. If you wanna run the converter, you have to be on power or into a generator. You can't run it off solar. But I have a way of getting around that. Okay, now this one here is the number one thing right here. I'll tell you how you do this. Is everybody wonders, how do you do this? Okay, so I have solar and I have a gen. 2000 here, 5000 here, or uh, no, 3000, because I don't go on the surge because it doesn't mean nothing. This is what you do, little boys and girls. If you don't want to run on the generator, okay, you want to run on solar, you have two plugs. I'm, we'll show you that in a minute. Two plugs. One for 30 amp, one for 15. You put the solar into one, put the generator into the other, and we'll run it on generator. So it's going to take 2,400 to start it up. I don't care if it's soft start, hard start, no start. It's going to take 2,400 watts for it to start up. I don't care what you do, it's going to take you 2,400 watts. Just go check it out and let me know if I'm wrong. So, what you do, plug them both in, that gives you 5,000 watts, and then you do what you want. Turn off the generator, or turn off the solar. And then you can run it on AC, your AC on the generator if you want. It's just starting it up, that's a big problem. And if you put it on max cold, that's another issue, because then it'll be drawn down all the time. But that's how you get around the, nobody will tell you that, but that's how you get around the, the generator thing and, and air conditioning, right? Now the other one, that is the fridge. 
the fridge. This is going to be a soft topic, but it doesn't matter. I'm not asked for permission. That's the way I do it. The fridge runs on propane way better than it does on, on uh, electric. I don't care what you say. I know it works. They work great. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that for you on propane, that's the way to do it. Run it on propane, you don't have a problem. When you're going down the road, turn it on to electric, and it'll keep it just fine. Or if you're going down the road and you don't want it, turn it off. It'll stay cold for three to four hours. Like, it's not a problem. The fridge. Now, I'm not saying you can't run on solar. But that's what it burns right there. 347 watts. This Dometic fridge burns. 347 watts. And I got 400 watts on the roof. So what's it doing? The solar is just barely keeping up to electric. That's why I go on a propane because then I don't have to worry about it. Now, with all these numbers and their generator, I don't have to sit you down and give you a, a, a piece of paper and figure this out. It's very simple. You got a 2000 watt generator and you want to run a 2400 watt air conditioner. You know the answer. Or a coffee machine. Now, if you want to run everything, like you hear about all these people like, um, um, off-grid schoolie and that they got like 10,000 watts of solar and that and that's why because they want to run their run their bus like they're at home and there's nothing wrong with that but if you're going to do that make sure you have the power to do it and if you got 10,000 watts of solar it ain't a problem I'm just saying for a 2,000 watt generator and a 3,000 watt inverter this is what you have to do so if you're running this one you can't run these and if you're running this one you can't run this and if you're running this one you can't run any you know you got it one at a time now with that being said I will make coffee in the morning this this, this is fact you can this is just fact I got that Canadian tire set up on my truck 400 watts 3,000 watt inverter and uh, four golf cart batteries I'll make coffee in the morning and Elle will get up and run her hair dryer and that and I will make toast all in the morning and the batteries are still by noon hour they're back up to snuff. I don't know how it works. All I'm saying is that's what it does. And we've been doing this for five years now and we've never had a problem. So if you want to get up and say I want to run my whole trailer on solar, go buy a six thousand watt inverter or, or six thousand watt generator or minimum is 3500 watts and run everything that's go ahead it's not a big deal if you want to do that do it i don't want to so we just you know pace it out run the coffee machine let it stop run the toaster let it stop do your hair l let it stop now l's doing her hair when i do toast i'll tell her just just a minute i'll make the toast and then she'll turn her hair dryer off and it all works out okay now on the other on the trailer we have a 30 amp plug and a 15 amp plug now the 15 amp plug we wired right into the circuit board it's on the other side and the generator runs so I don't want to go over there we ran it into the generator and we put it in or sorry into the fuse box we put a 15 amp breaker on so when we're on 15 amp we turn it on when we're on the 30 amp we turn the 30 amp on and then we turn either one we're not using off it's very simple we have two cords as you know the trucks always plugged into the trailer when I'm going down the road so that's why we did it that way and if you're going to use a 15 amp plug don't try to run the air conditioner off it it's more than 15 amps sorry or the microwave or whatever or run the coffee machine and the converter you just it's all it is is logic and all you have to do is pace yourself there's nothing that says you have to get up and turn everything on. You don't have to do that. Just do one thing at a time. And then you'll be like me and say, geez, you can make 400 watts of solar work for you. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. You can make it work for you. You just got to change it a bit. Okay? That's that bit of it. Now I'm going to really get you going. Because this one here is my good old multimeter. Now, 
Lots of people are going to say nothing. Just remember, I didn't ask for permission. This is what I do. 90% of the time, I plug in with this cord. This is a 14 3 wire. Or sorry, 12 3 wire. And look at this. I'll plug it in here. It's in. The, it's plugged in the generator on the other side, so it's 100 feet. And there you go. 125 volts. Now I'm going to change it because everybody knows the magic number for electric is 60 me 60 megahertz, right? 60. Now we're plugged into 100 watt. 100 or 100 foot cord look at that 60 right on 60 hertz so the cord isn't really the big deal i've plugged into that green cord since i've had it and never had a problem everybody says you can't do it well i'm here to tell you you can because i do it all the time i i have hooked this trailer up to 200 feet of cord never had a problem because i don't run the air conditioner and i don't run the hot water tank I don't run the big power things. Now you're saying, well, why do you have them? I said, I don't know. I bought the trailer and it was cookie cutter. So it came with an air conditioner. We haven't had it on three minutes. So we don't even use it, but it's there. Do we use it? No, we don't use it. But all it takes is logic is all I'm saying. Just think what you want to use. And if you want to use it now, if you want to use it, then use it. But if you don't, you can do it. And you can save yourself a lot of money. That's all I got on that one. I hope that helped it for a couple of people ask me about how I hook my generator to my trailer. And that's how I do it. Like today, it's cloudy, so we're not getting no solar, so we're charging up. But I wanted to show you that the 100-foot cord plugged into the generator puts out 60 hertz. Everybody says it can't do it. Well, you just seen it, did it. So that's all I'm going to say on that one. Have a good day, and thanks for watching.